think some people even realize. And that's the power of choice. Um, and, and so um, the, the sin enslaves brothers and sisters. And the Bible says that sin, we looked at the power of sin, and we, and we saw that slave, sin enslaves and destroys those who do what? Those who choose to remain in it. That's their choice. We studied the blood of Christ and the word of God. And we, and we saw that the blood and the word works powerfully, but who does it work powerfully through? In those who choose to appropriate them into their lives. That's who. So we're going to be talking about choice today and the power of choice and how very powerful it is, brothers and sisters. One of the most powerful things that God has given the human race. We see in Genesis 3, the first six verses, brethren, and you know the story here about the the temptation of Adam and Eve. Eve first, you know, and the devil comes to her and he kind of changes around and, and, and questions her. Does God really say that if you you do this, you're going to die? And she said, yeah, we can't eat of that forbidden fruit. And y'all know the story and everything. And what does he do? What in, in, in those six verses, brethren, we see the first time in the Bible, not the last, of course, but the first time where they exercise what we refer to as free moral agency. God did not create us robots where he controls every little thing we do. We have free moral agency. In other words, we have choice. Now, Adam and Eve could have chosen not to eat that forbidden fruit. Their choice was to do so. Eve first, and then she convinced her husband, Adam. So, brothers and sisters, ever since Adam and Eve, we've all had choice. Your life, your relationships, they're your choice. You choose. Now, 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 young people, you you understand, you know, these younger kids, as a, as a child, a lot of those choices are made for us, you know. Um, <clears throat> my mama kind of chose what we were going to eat, you know, whatever she put on the table. See, when you're younger, you know, your, kid, you, 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 uh, your little kids don't get to go in the closet and choose what they want to wear. I don't know. The way some of them dress anymore, I wonder. But, but, uh, but, but as you get older, see, and you, and, and, you, and you reach what we call age of accountability or a certain level of maturity, then you're able to make your own choices, right? And most of you, and, and young people understand this. You say, well, I don't get to choose a whole lot. Are you proving yourself to your parents to be trustworthy? Any parent want to say amen to that? You know, you know what? You, you got to choose. You got to do that, young folk. Okay, as you get older, you you show your parents that you can make certain choices, and they're going to be the right choices. Because see, we can choose, and we can choose to do right. We can choose to do wrong, brothers and sisters. God's given us that ability, and it is a powerful thing. It is power in that. We can choose to obey or disobey God. We can choose to serve God or Satan, and we do, one way or the other. You can choose to do good in school, young people, or you can choose to be mediocre. You, those of you that are out of school and are working for a living, you can choose to do your very best on your job and to try to excel, or you can do just enough to get by to keep from getting fired. You can choose to be a success or a failure in life, and I know different people define success in different ways. And, beloved, the truth is, and I have people argue with me, but the truth is you choose whether or not you spend an eternity in heaven or hell. You make those choices by the life that you live. Somebody there, you think I'd choose hell? Yes. Yes. There's people that do by their lifestyle, by the way they have, are living, by the way that they want to live for themselves, not for Christ. You see, how you will behave how you act, how you respond is going to be a matter of choice. We have phrases that we use sometimes. So-and-so just makes me so mad. Now, they don't make you mad. You choose to get mad at that moment. They, they may know what buttons to push. You know, some of us have been talking about them, I just can't help it. Well, that's not entirely true, brethren, you see. No, we choose to do those things, okay? Who was it, Terry Clark, and, way, and I know I age myself, you know, the, the country singer that said, I just want to be mad. And, and that's the truth of the matter, you know? We make all the excuses in the world. 
But we choose. And then people would say to me at this point, Brother Green, you think I chose my lifestyle? You think I chose to be born into a dysfunctional family? You know, and you think I chose for my parents to divorce? You think I chose these health problems? You think I chose that horrible accident that put me in a wheelchair the rest of my life? You think I chose to be raised up poor? You think I chose this pretty lousy life that I'm living? Brothers and sisters, that's true. We can't choose those things. We can't choose our circumstances. We can't choose things that happen beyond our ability to do something about in this life. But you choose what you're going to do about the circumstance. You choose how you're going to respond to it. Beloved, I made no secret of the fact that we grew up poor, you know. We had hard times in our family, and our daddy got us five boys together when we was pretty young. And he and he set us down on a campfire on a riverbank, and it was a, just a beautiful time. And, and, and he said, boys, let me just be plain with you guys. He said, we're poor. And he said, more than likely, we're going to stay that way till y'all grow up and do something about it. He said, our situation's not going to change. He said, but we got a choice. He said, we can be miserable and mourn and blame society and blame life and blame anything and everything else in the world. Or he said, we can choose to enjoy life and have a good time in spite of our circumstances. Now, what would you boys like to do? And so we chose to enjoy life. Not that there wasn't hard times, brothers and sisters, but we just decided we're going to enjoy life to the most part, and that's what we tried to do. You have a choice. Brother, you choose how and what you think. You choose your outlook on life. You choose your attitude. You choose your attitude. Had a lady said to me one time when I mentioned about her always negative attitude, do you think I want to think this way? I said, yes. Because if you didn't, you wouldn't. Brethren, that's the power of choice. That is the power of choice. Choice can literally change our destination. It can literally change our destiny. There are some people that are just constantly negative. You know, I've, I've teased sometimes that some people can brighten up an entire room just by leaving it. Um, you know, but, but they just blame their problems on anything and everything in the world. People with addictive personalities, this is one of the things that is part of an addictive personality, is the blame game. They'll blame their parents. They'll blame their circumstances. They'll blame God. They'll blame their mate. They'll blame it, whatever. I mean, I mean, it just, you know, and, and it's never their fault, and they're always the victim, you see. And so... <clears throat> But whatever we get into, brothers and sisters, we choose. We don't always choose our circumstances. Again, I want to make that clear. But we choose to view our problems in a negative or a positive way. We can see that and examples of that in the Bible. You know, there there are those who choose a positive outlook. And those folk have problems. You know, I hear people say, well, if, if so-and-so had my problem, they wouldn't be so positive. They wouldn't be so happy. No, no, they have problems, too. Maybe not exactly what you've got, but they've got problems. In the world, you're going to have tribulation, Jesus said. None of us get through this world without heartache and hardship. And so then you've got to have that outlook. And so people view, choose to view things in a positive way. Or a negative way. Brethren, I'm not talking about a stick your head in the sand and kind of deny stuff. We're not talking about denial. We're talking about looking at things as they are and say, okay, what? how am I going to react to this situation? See, the positive folk are going to say, well, how can I solve this? What can I do about this? What can I learn from this? Or even as the Bible says sometime, you know, you, you know you're know, you not going to get out of the situation. It's going to be with you the rest of life. So how do you endure it? What do you do about it, see? Beloved, the truth of the matter is you, you choose to be happy or sad, right? Philippians 4, verses 4 and verse 8 says this, okay? Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. Always, he says. That's the attitude you need to have. Now, understand, be thought in prison when he writes this, and not a modern-day prison like our prisoners enjoy today. I mean a horrible situation. And then he says in verse 8, he says, Finally, brethren, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, Whatever is of good repute or good reputation, some versions say, if there's any excellence and if there's anything worthy of praise, dwell on these things. Some versions say, let your mind dwell on these things. 
He said, now, 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 Paul could have had another list and said, oh, whatever is horrible and terrible and all these bad, bad things that's happening to me. And he lists them at one time. Three times I've been shipwrecked. Three times I've been beaten with rot. I've been stoned. I've been, you know, all these things, you know. And, and he could have, he could have just dwelled on that and said, no, 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 no. It's good stuff. See, we have choice, brothers and sisters, and, and as has been said, attitude determines your altitude, doesn't it? Doesn't it? Understand, brothers and sisters, there is a great power in choice. You can literally change your life by the choices you make. And that power, since we have free moral agency, is for either good or bad. It's for success or failure, but you make the choice. Your future, your eternity depends upon the choices you make now. Some of y'all are enjoying a good retirement now because way back when you were a youngster and had still had half a brain, you decided to go to work for a particular company that paid you well and takes care of you in retirement. That was a choice you made. And that choice is paying dividends to this day. Beloved, our, our eternity literally depends upon the choices that we're going to be making now in this life. There's so many good biblical examples of that, right? There are biblical examples of those who made good choices and those who made unwise choices. Let's look at a few this morning. There's many, but let's look at a few this morning. They're less than a billion years, okay? Those who chose wrongly, let's start with that, okay? Proverbs 1, <clears throat> in Proverbs chapter 1, we see uh, verses 24 through 33 where, where there are those who chose wrongly and God tells them the consequence. There's always consequences, either good or bad, of your choices, okay? And, and so in verse 24 of Proverbs 1, because I called you and you refused, there's your choice. I stretched out my hand and no one paid attention. And you neglected all my counsel and did not want my reproof. I will also laugh at your calamity. I will mock when your dread comes, when your dread comes like a storm and when your um, calamity comes like a whirlwind, when distress and anguish come upon you. Then they will call on me, but I will not answer. They will seek me diligently, but will not find me. Why? Because, verse 29, they hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of the Lord. They made the wrong choice, right? So he goes on to say in verse 30, they would not accept my counsel. They spurned all my reproof. So they shall lead to the fruit of the, their own way and be satiated with their own devices. For the waywardness of the naive will kill them and the complacency of, of fools will destroy them. But he who listens to me shall live securely and will be at ease from the dread of evil. These people purposely chose to reject God and they suffer the consequences. You see, in Isaiah chapter 65, there's uh, verse 12. In Isaiah 65 and verse 12 says this, I will destine you for the sword, and all of you will bow down to the slaughter because I called, but you did not answer. I spoke, but you did not hear. You, and you did evil in my sight. And listen to this now, verse 12, and chose that which I did not delight. They chose. They chose to go against God. And then you see one chapter over in chapter 66, verses 3 and 4. The word says there, God is high, uh, rebuking their hypocrisy, of, especially in their sacrifices. As you'll notice the terminology here <coughs> to him. And he says, but he who kills the ox is like one who slays a man. He who sacrifices a lamb is like the one who breaks a dog's net. He who offers a grain offering is like the one who offers swine's blood. He who burns incense is like the one who uh, blesses an idol. Why? And he's talking about the way they were worshiping him was all wrong. And he said, why? Because as they have chosen their own way. And their soul delights in their abominations. So he says, God chooses too, verse 4, I will choose their punishment. I will bring on them what they dread. Because I called, but no one answered. I spoke, but they did not listen. 
and they did evil in my sight and chose that in which I did not delight. Beloved, we have choice, good or bad, and there's always consequences of those choices, okay? Now, those are people that the Bible tells us chose wrongly. Look at some that chose wisely, okay? In Psalms uh, 119, verse 30, um, we, we see this. I have chosen the faithful way. I have placed your ordinances before me. Those are the right kind of choices, right? And then he goes on to say in verse 173 of the same psalm, of the same chapter, um, you have that one, brother? I might have left it out. I had it on the side, and sometime when I have something on the side, I don't, I don't get it in, okay? Let me turn there real quick. I'm almost there. Psalm, Psalms 119, okay, verse 173. I take full responsibility for that, brother, and I can, I can do that sometime I outline it. Um, oh, good, good, thank you. Let your hand be ready to help me, for I have chosen your precepts. Brother, we do, don't we? Uh, the, the bottom line, we choose whether we're going to obey God or not. We chose God's precepts or God's word or whether we're going to reject God's word. We, we make that choice. Let me tell you what. You're here this morning, I guarantee you, because you chose to be here. Amen? You chose to. There are people that are here that are not here today. No, I'm not talking about the EO. I'm not talking about those who are home fast. I'm not talking about those who cannot be here because of circumstances beyond their control. But I'm talking about every Sunday there are people there in the Lord's church who are supposed to be worshiping God and not forsaking the assembly, and they're not here because they chose not to be here today. They can give you some excuse. But the bottom line is they chose to do something else. Or to be somewhere else, okay? Now, brethren, I'm not saying there's not some legitimate choices. I'm not, I'm not giving a blanket statement condemning everybody. But y'all know good and well there's people that say, you know what? I just want to sleep in this morning. You know, I've had a hard weekend or something. I'm not talking about <coughs> people that are legitimately ill or, or something like that. I'm, I'm just talking about on a regular basis. There are certain folk that, are, that choose not to be here to worship God. So we need to choose wisely, okay? Luke 10, 42, y'all know are very familiar with this as you see this, okay? And and this is Martha and Mary in the situation with them. And, and one was serving in the kitchen and the other one was sitting at Jesus' feet. And and, and so Jesus is, is talking about that. And he says, but only one thing is necessary. This was as he was teaching them about this, you know. Only one thing is necessary for Mary has what? Chosen. Chosen the good part, which shall not be taken away from her. Beloved, choose that. Choose what will not be taken away. Choose to walk with the Heavenly Father. Okay? Choose that. Okay? Choose that. I heard a saying one time that says, A man is no fool who gives up what he cannot keep in order to, in order to gain what he will not lose. We make choices. So we need to choose wisely, right? Um, and then Hebrews 11, 24 through 26, this is about Moses, okay? When by faith, Moses, when he had grown up, he refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing, choosing. He made a tremendous choice because he could have been the next Pharaoh scholar, say. He would have been extremely, if not the richest man in the world at the time and certainly one of the most powerful. If he would have went and been the next Pharaoh, as most historians say he would have been. So what did he do? He chose instead. He chose to rather to endure ill treatment with the people of God than to enjoy the passing pleasures of sin, considering the reproaches of Christ greater riches than the treasures of Egypt. But he was looking to the reward. That man chose right. He had his eyesight in the right direction. He chose right. So, beloved, we need to choose. We have to choose. We make choices every day. And there's great power in those choices. So if you're going to choose, choose wisely. Okay? Choose wisely. In Deuteronomy 30, verses 15 through 20, this is God getting ready to take his people over into the promised land that he has given them. He's led them out of Egyptian slavery, and he's giving them instruction as they're going to be entering this new country. And he says in verses 15 through 20 um, in Deuteronomy 30, y'all got it. Let me just read it this way. Y'all mind if I turn this way and look? Okay. See, I have set before you today life and prosperity, death and adversity. He said, you got your choice. Here's one or the other. You think that'd be a no-brainer, right? Let me see. Do I want life or do I want death? Boy, I don't want to think about that. In that I command you today to love the Lord your God, to walk in his ways, to keep his commandments and his statutes and his judgment, that you may live and multiply, and that the Lord your God may bless you in the land where you're going to possess it. Okay? He goes on to say, but if your heart turns away 
and you will not obey, but are drawn away and worship other gods and serve them, I declare to you today that you shall surely perish. You will not prolong your days in the land where you are crossing the Jordan to enter and possess it. Isn't that amazing? I call it heaven and earth to witness against you today that I've set before you life and death, the blessing and the curse. So as God said, here you have it. You have life, you have death. You have blessing, you have a curse. So what do you have to do then? You choose. You choose. You make that powerful choice, which will determine your destiny one way or the other. And he told them what it would be. And you choose. And he says... He says, what do you do? Choose life. Doesn't that make sense? You got death, you got life. Choose lives in order that you may live, you and your descendants. And he talks about that as he brings them into the land. My goodness, brothers and sisters. Why don't we make the right choices, see? That's what we've got to do. Joshua 24, 15, which was our scripture reading today, we began with it. Be good to end with it, right? Because Joshua, as he's taken these people uh, 40 years later, of course, into the land of promise, and, and, and so he says to them, you know, because already they're starting to do what they swore they wouldn't do. They're starting to go after some idols. And so Joshua reminds them, if it is disagreeable in your sight to serve the Lord, you know what? It can be disagreeable, and you can, and you can decide you're not going to do it. God gives you that choice. If it's disagreeable in the sight to serve the Lord, choose for yourself. Choose, he said. You choose. You choose for yourself. Can't nobody else choose that for you. You choose for yourself whom you will serve. And brethren, you're going to serve some God. If not the one true God, you, you'll serve all kind of idols and false gods and the devil. You're going to serve somebody. So Joshua said, it's a matter of choice, then you choose. Okay, you choose whom you serve, whether the gods which your father served, which were beyond the river, or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you are living. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Beloved, there is such a tremendous amount of power in the choices we make. So choose wisely. And friend, let me tell you, the wisest decision you can make in your entire life is to give your life to the Lord. If you haven't done that, we're hoping and praying you'll choose wisely this morning and you'll come forward and let us show you what God's word says to do to get right and to remain right with your heavenly father.